draw your motion. Or, or vote on it. Um, I'd be willing to withdraw it as, okay. long as, we, as long as we move the point. Okay. Which is the purpose. Right. And uh, I have a dated receipt which is now being duplicated. And I will give that to you. Okay. Would you like to ask Mr. Brown any questions? You had a question about the wetlands and your own consultation. He's available for you. Does anyone have any question to ask Mr. Brown at this point? Or would you prefer to wait for the next time? About the soil? About Wet the wetlands. wetlands. The wetlands. I just think that when we do get to the point of walking them, it would be very helpful to have the flagging explicitly on the map. If you can be there to explain. In addition, that would be So you see, you will be leaving with something tonight. I will give you this receipt. Thank you. What do you think of that? I didn't ask for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Here's the receipt. And uh, I assume we'll see you the next time if you. Madam Chairman, it may it be appropriate to 29. table this pending a determination of completeness. I would so move. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much and good luck. Does the planning board need a break before yes. the uh -huh. next one? Uh, the planning board will take a very short break before we address the next item on the agenda. We'll be back. packet you have a new site plan with the change and you also have a supposed to have a colored copy of the old one showing the changes there it's a little I won't say it's comical but the original sketch of our market is designed the way we're ending up with it uh, this is the original sketch with the doors coming out the side of the portico rather than out the front. That was just the dream from the beginning, and that's the way we're desiring to go now. In fact, if you've been by the market, uh, the windows are in the front and the doors have been cut in the side already. So you've got a sheet that tells you the technical changes, uh, the difference in the uh, sidewalk, the, the shrinkage of that plus the increase in the driving and turning. There's minor changes. We're increasing one tree here and decreasing one tree there. So I think that I'll just leave it with that. And if you have any questions, I know your chairman and Steve Butler have both been over this. And so if you have any questions, we'll be glad to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. The, the, the amendment does speak for itself. and. I, I perceive it to be a minor change, and uh, I will open the floor to anyone <coughs> who from the planning board who'd like to ask Mr. Maxwell a question or make any comments on this amendment. In your new plan, as you face the building, because we'll have a door coming out either side of the portico, but the door to the left, which is south on the lot, but to your left, that will be constructed and everything for handicapped use, and it won't be dedicated only for that because uh, others will be able to use it, but that's going to give us a real nice, safe uh, place for them. They're going to be able to go right straight off, or they're going to be able to turn and come out uh, into the parking area either way. Uh, that would be a beautiful place for a handicapped parking place right there. Uh, the original plan, they would be coming right straight out the front with quite a slope and be ending up right in the middle of the parking lot when they did that. So we feel as though this is a, is a, a real fine improvement there. Better. Thank you. Any questions or comments from members of the planning board?
This basically only includes the area that's highlighted on this plan. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, the changes are right there. Okay. See, we had an, in your submission sheet, the display area plus the sidewalk was a total of 19 feet deep. So we are proposing to narrow that down <coughs> to 11 feet. I mean, of course, we can do that by coming out the side. We don't need that large area out the front. So all we're doing is changing it from, we're shrinking the concrete area of display and sidewalk and increasing the blacktop area uh, from 28 to, what is it, 28 to 32 feet, from 24 to 32 feet, which we feel is crucial there, especially that's where the heavy traffic is, and that's going to give a lot more room there to, for people while, you know, technically we had enough before, according to the engineers and everything. Th this, we feel, is going to just give everybody that much more comfortable room to turn and enter and leave. Any other questions or comments? Yes, uh, Mr. Boxer. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Please do. Please do. I would uh, move that the request of Kenneth Maxwell to amend the already approved site plan for the Maxwell Farm Market located off Spurwink Avenue by decreasing the depth of the front sidewalk display area, moving the location of the entrance doors, Eliminating one parking space and modifying the planning schedule to be granted in accordance with section 19-2-9 of the zoning ordinance and the facts presented, subject to the following condition, that all planting shall be of the size indicated on the site plan at the time of planting. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Well, it's unanimous. Good luck again. This is the second time we wished you well with your project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Okay. Next on the agenda, uh, Fox Walk, Peter Rummery, Spurwink Avenue, a public access waiver for two lot. Is there... Oh, hello. Welcome. Are you Mr. Rummery? Yes, ma'am. Well, welcome to, the, welcome to the planning board, Mr. Rummery. Thank you very much, and good evening. I think you have in front of you my uh, offering for a public access way, my initial appearance, and it is my opinion that I've fulfilled just the initial requirements of the board. And I would like uh, direction from you for me to be allowed to get building permits for these proposed lots. Um, could you clarify that direction from us? I mean, uh, specifically what kind of direction? Uh, <coughs> I am applying for this public access way right. uh, as a preliminary to getting building permits for these proposed lots. Right. Uh, I realize I have to have the legal description of the two lots involved. Mm -hmm. And I certainly know that I have to comply with the rules of the zoning ordinance for right. the public access way. Right, which is uh, section... Um, 19-4-2B. Right. For a public access waiver. And you uh, are requiring of me recorded covenants binding these lots affected as I read the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're proposing? Why don't you tell us about the um, 
the access itself, how long it is. Just fill us in on the uh, All right. on the details, Mr. Rummery. This is a portion of land that I own, uh, actually have owned it for 20 years. The property that I own has a 40-foot uh, opening to Spurwink Avenue between the two properties listed on, shown on my small sketch. Right. Uh, that is, by today's standards, too narrow for public road. Uh, however, it is a very good example of what I believe that this public access way was designed for <coughs> in that I have larger than a 30-foot opening to Sperling Avenue. It, I desire to develop two lots off of this w roughly 100-foot long by 40-foot wide access. Mm -hmm. This being my first uh, appearance before you, I don't know exactly what beyond this in technicality I'm required to bring to you for your approving this as being a public access way. Mm -hmm. And it's my opinion that I need your uh, acceptance of this before I can then attain building permits for these right. lots. Exactly. That's my right. ultimate goal. Right. Well, we could ask you a few questions if you have finished. Certainly. Well, Madam Chairman, would you I like to start? I've got a couple. Sure. Um, <laughs> um, I think I understand the, uh, the issues of not having uh, appeared before the planning board before, too, and, and wondering just what it is we we're looking for. I think maybe the best way is to ask some questions. Mm -hmm. um, the zoning district is a residential uh, residential district C, which right. uh, requires 20,000 square feet, and you've got two properties that are 23,000 square feet. And Peter, when when you went through the ordinance and looked at the public access <coughs> waiver requirements, um, you've hi you've hit on all of the issues that are required by our ordinance, and then answered those in, in your application to the town. Um, one of the issues uh, that we have is uh, uh, a public safety issue and whether or not the fire chief has been communicated with and whether or not he has indicated anything uh, relative to this application. So that's one of the things that we'll be looking at. The other issue is um, a, a site walk. Uh, I believe all public access waivers that this board that I've been involved in have gone out and looked at the site, stood there, kicked the dirt, looked both ways right. in the road, walked down on the land, just to get a sense and feel for what it is that's uh, uh, being talked about. And Madam Chairman, that may be the first appropriate thing to do right. so that we have some <laughs> sense about uh, Peter's application and also the letters that we've received uh, on the application. And it's, it's hard to get that sense sitting here looking at a small map. So right. maybe what we should do is, is uh, start the process, uh, By planning schedule a site, a site walk. walk. Yeah, I had thought of that too. And also, have you provided um, uh, right proof of right title and interest in this land to the town? Uh, no, I did not. I that, that would be a good that's idea. Another piece of information that I had gotten from Mr. Butler. Uh, I, I guess I'm uh, surprised that I need to supply 15 copies. Whether you all have to decide whether or not I have legal title, but I can I can do so. And also, Madam Chairman, to answer Mr. Tinsman's comment about the fire chief, I have spoken to him, and he forwarded to me the uh, requirements for various cul-de-sacs, and and I'm aware of that. Uh, the emergency vehicle turnaround, and I will admit that uh, my sketch shows a turnaround uh, and inadvertently uh, has locked lot number one from access to that, and that's obviously mm -hmm. an oversight. Yeah, I've we would need to know the dimensions of that. Fine. And we would also have to have a report from the chief to us in regard to uh, 
fire and emergency vehicle safety on that road. It also might be a good idea to tell us how long is that road. Uh, the the two lots, the, the lot on the left, which is uh, owned by the Schnells, has a 100-foot dimension along that road. The lot uh, owned by the Royals, I believe that's a 115-foot line. Mm -hmm. So you could consider that road as either 100 feet or 115 feet uh, uh, long. Right. Okay. And I have designed a, uh, a proper uh, emergency vehicle turnaround based on the, the information that the chief sent chief me, sent which I received you. earlier this week. Good. I Good. would submit that forthwith along with uh, the uh, copy of my deed and so forth. Right. Is there any other... Uh, information that the planning board Madam, feels that Madam he Chairman, would need. Yes. Uh, Mr. Armour is going to be redrafting um, the, tur the turnaround um, yeah. anyway to uh, make sure lot number one isn't locked out. I would suggest, Peter, when you do that, that you might go to scale 140 so in dimension mm -hmm. uh, the lot so that we can see mm -hmm. um, what it is you're verbalizing here. Mm -hmm. Also, idea. I think it would be very helpful to uh, you've labeled some of the property owners, but I would be interested in who the other property owners are that bought this on at least one, two, three sides. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's have nice. we had any? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Have we had any uh, opinion as to whether or not this constitutes a subdivision? It was raised in mm -hmm. one of the letters. I know, but I think we should get that opinion from the town attorney and the staff to see if it is a subdivision. But I, I think we should go definitely go on a site walk, whatever it yeah. turns out to be. And um, when would the board like to uh, go? I will not be around from September 29th until October 7th. This Saturday? This Saturday. I think I'm free this Saturday. This what about Saturday. the rest mm -hmm. of you? I won't be there, but I can see this at some point. Some uh, point. Uh, make oh, arrangements with Peter to come over and see it. Would you be free um, next Saturday? Or if you're not, could this we coming? just go and trespass mm -hmm. on your yeah. property? September, September I would 23. be very happy to escort you. Uh, uh, you're certainly free to walk on it if I'm not there, but I would like to meet with you. Hurricane Hugo. Right. Oh, September 23rd is that? It's coming right? on Monday. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> <That's a certain laughs> so Saturday, September 23rd, what time, uh, ladies and gentlemen? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Would that be all right with you? That's fine. Great. Madam Chairman, I uh, there's another item that uh, came to my mind as you were speaking. I yes. have approached the... Uh, uh, sewer Bob Malley. I have a little trouble with names. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Malley. Mr. Malley. Right. And he gave me an indication that that uh, he thought that some of the uh, that these public access ways did not did not cover what the sewer department needed as far as giving sewer rights. I don't, he said he was going to check into it. I, I don't have any idea whether mm. this gone through this board or even if it would, but. Well, sewers are not our purview. So um, I think right. that, you know, Steve, maybe when you're talking with Mr. Malley, you could just ask Steve and, or Mr. Malley, but that's not. In, in terms of whether or not a public access waiver roadway then constitutes frontage to get hooked into the sewer, the answer I'm, is pretty clear, and the answer is no. Um, but if there's some other way that you might be able to get one of your lots hooked up to the sewer, that's something that the Bob Alley would want to look at. But I will check with him to, to see if he's come up with an answer. Madam Chairman, just yes. one other thing I want to point out to, to the board, but also to the applicant, um, because we don't normally send these out, is that um, Bob Hunter did send a preliminary sort of review letter 
regarding uh, this matter and raise some issues regarding the, uh, the slope, the change in slope from Spurwink Avenue back uh, along the proposed public access waiver area and talks about some other concerns as well. So those are things that the board may want to look at. It's also something that the applicant may want to get a copy of at some point. Uh, Spurwink Avenue is a fairly long um, avenue. Whereabouts is this located? This would be uh, approximately, call it 700 feet west of Mr. Maxwell's oh. farm, on the opposite side of the street. Okay. How far from Perpudic per Road? Uh, it's uh, a third of the way from Ken Maxwell's farm stand to Perpudic. So it a is... A third of the way? Right. Between, okay. Uh, on the same side as Perpudic? Mm -hmm. Yes. Between the farm okay. stand... What I will do in the... Maybe even for the site walk, unless Mr. Rummery wants to do it, is to uh, make a copy of the parcel map, which shows pretty clearly where it is in relationship to Pleasant Avenue, Spurwink Avenue, Mr. Maxwell's property, and also how the two proposed lots fit into the rest of Mr. Uh, Rummery's land holdings and existing lots. Mm, that would be excellent, Steve. Thank you. Anything else? Well, we thank you for coming. and. Um, I guess we will see you on Saturday, September 23rd at 10 a.m. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chair. you, Look Mr. Forward. Rumley. Okay. Next on the agenda, and we're running 15 minutes late, uh, we have Tom Tinsman. Madam Chairman, before Office. you start this one. Oh, I just knew what you were going to say. Go, go ahead. I recognize the last name uh, on this application and probably yeah. is related to me at some point in time. And uh, I would request uh, or indicate to the board that I intend to defer from any discussion or action on this issue. And we'll be leaving the uh, austere group during the discussion of this. Well, I appreciate your good judgment on this matter, and we thank you for all of the help that you have given us this evening. But I shall return. Okay. Thanks again. Can I go home? Yes, you may <laughs> go home. No, yeah. I'm discuss something else. No, no. Uh, before you go, I'll just tell you that uh, we are going to have a, a meeting, a joint oh, meeting. Understand. You really are? Yeah, I want to watch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you had indicated that you were just leaving. Thank you. Um, in uh, Mr. Tinsman's absence, I would like to appoint Steve Edsel to um, take his place, if you would, please. So is there uh, someone from um, the Tinsman office? You are Mr. Tinsman. Welcome. My name is Tom Tinsman. I live at 24 Ocean Avenue in Cape Elizabeth, and I work at 343 Ocean House Road. Mm -hmm. So, okay. <laughs> what is your <laughs> what is your proposal uh, this evening, Mr. Tinsman? My request tonight is to ask the board permission to use the home at 349 Ocean House Road which is in, located in a BA zone, uh, to use that as a business and professional office. Right. And you have the, <coughs> all of the offices drawn out? Yes. Any other comments or anything? Well, I would like to here? apologize before we get started on the uh, hand-drawn drawings. Right. I got my bank financing two days prior to the deadline for submission. Mm -hmm. So I did the best that I could. Uh, well, from I, I could understand it. Oh, good. <laughs> and you have proposed 13 parking spaces. Yes. And you need approximately 11. 10. 10. 10. Yes. 11. We, 11. Round, we round up. But okay. We're still okay. Rounding up, we need 11. Anything else that you want to tell us about it, or would you prefer that we started uh, asking questions? Um, I, would, I would like to move right into the questions. Move right into the questions. 
Well, first of all, I'm a little mixed up. I read the, n the newspaper, uh, you know, the Cape Courier? Yes. And um, under the, um, the boards and commissions, they stated that a Tom Tinsman, now maybe you're not the same one, had approached the zoning board in regard to a gymnasium, some sort of a gym. Now, is that a different property? Or is it this property, and what is your status at the zoning board that with the is, gym? This is the same property. Same property. Uh, it's a future proposal. It is not one now being considered. Uh, it is more or less a dream that I have at some point of, of coming back to the appropriate boards and presenting uh, for consideration. Uh, it's not something that I would like considered here tonight. Right. Uh, I would like to make those considerations if and when they do um, become realities in the future. Sometime in the future. Okay. Thank it may that. never happen. That I just got a little mixed up. So okay. this is definitely a proposal to convert a residence into an office yes. building. And, and that's it. This building will not be affected by any plans that have been presented to the state. Uh, what was shown to the zoning board at that time was a proposed future building to be constructed on that site in oh, addition to the I building see. that's there now. Because it does seem like a small place to have a gym. Well, this the building the is, yes. yes. Yeah, it's a Cape Cod <laughs> style house. Right. That's right. Is okay. this essentially a request to move your present office to this house? Yes. So the current office will revert to some other use? That's right. Okay. Okay, any questions from other people on the planning board? Well, I, I drove by there today. And it's, it's hard to find. Uh, but one thing that did occur to me when I had seen this was the sign, and I looked through the material. Uh, and I think we need some more detail on what it's going to look like. I think uh, if you're basically talking about using that house as an office um, and some parking, uh, then I think one of the things that would at least concern, not, not concern me, but that I'd want to see uh, in advance is what kind of a sign you plan to have because we, in some instances we haven't had much choice. We've been stuck with the... Uh, with signs, uh, and in other instances, I think we've done a pretty decent job. Uh, so I think there would be some interest in uh, in that. And the other uh, question I had when I looked at this was uh, was lighting, mm -hmm. whether or not you would propose any additional lighting. I wouldn't at this time, mostly because we're closed in the evening hours. Uh, maybe one or two people might go into the office at night for a brief visit. There is a spotlight on the back of the building that does light the back yard. It's able to be turned on and off as needed. And uh, where it is next to a residential zone, I would prefer not to have any constant lighting in the area that might disturb the residential use. Um, on the parking, you say under parking that, that you're going to expand the parking <coughs> area. Um, with a 50 by 50 extension. Will there be any need to uh, go to the zoning board again for any aspect of this project? For the office conversion? No, for, for any expansions. Uh, yes, anything done in the future would have to go to the appropriate board. No, boards. I mean right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I oh. was... For any part of what you are proposing? No. No, you don't have any? No, there any will be no alterations whatsoever to right. the existing building. No zoning uh, no. board. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, I don't know whether you received a copy or not of the September 12th letter to Mr. But Butler about Mrs. Reiki and how she felt about the buffering uh, between the two properties, but... Uh, I guess she felt that perhaps there was not adequate buffering for a six to eight foot above ground level area. But there is a line of fir trees that apparently does buffer well between the two properties on a higher view but not on the lower view. Are yes, I received a copy of that letter from Randy Blake tonight, mm -hmm. uh, who's here in attendance. Um, 
I don't have any problems with that. There is a substantial buffering all over the property. As Mr. Boxer mentioned, when you drive by the property, it's uh, quite often you don't even notice the building is there because of all <coughs> the foliage and the trees and, and all the landscaping that has already been done. I do note that on that border between the residential and the business zone <coughs> that there are a number of tall trees that, that do have um, the lower branches uh, pretty much open. would be willing to do whatever the board sees fit to you could accommodate or perhaps talk with her and discuss oh, uh, sure. what yeah. best might be put in there yes. to make an adequate screen. Yes. Is that a residential zone uh, or is her house and business property also? My understanding is that the, the, the boundary for the business and the residential zone is the boundary between my property and... Then I think that's even more important than perhaps that we try to accommodate. Yes. Mm -hmm. How much um, traffic does a, uh, a real estate firm get? I notice you ha will have nine people inside the office, yes. eight licensed, one unlicensed. That's right. So you would need the nine parking spaces, but the people do come and go, don't they? Yes, they do. And uh, you wouldn't have as many cars coming in as a retail establishment, no. I wouldn't assume. No, we currently have 12 parking spots in our office next door. Right. And we very seldom ever use all 12, 12 spots. The only time that we're all in the office at the same time is, is Tuesday mornings at 9 o'clock when we have our agency meeting. Mm -hmm. And other than that, most of the people either work at home or at other people's houses. Right. And they're constantly on the go. Because you do so much phone work. And I don't assume that you have customers coming in there. So No, that's right. The typical situation in a real estate office is that most of the offices are not private mm -hmm. offices where it's conducive to private consultation so right. or phone calling so a lot of people do that type of work at home. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, so many issues I think that are going to be important. Um, this uh, application also include the aspect of traffic. Now, I think that shot into that property is a pretty straight shot so it shouldn't be a problem from a site view point of view, but you do have the high school entrance close by, and what the effect of the two uh, activities are at various times would be maybe something we should be concerned about, even though, like I say, I think the site view is pretty good at that location, if I remember correctly where it is. Madam Chairman? Yes. Um, the site view brings up a, a question that I have, and maybe Stephen can help. Uh, when we go through a change of use, in the diagram it doesn't show the width of the driveway. Um, but we'll definitely have ingress and egress of traffic. Uh, is that something that requires a double-wide uh, passage? Um. And also, uh, do you know what the speed limit is? That 35. 35 there. 35. I think this is definitely a place that we would want to to go to since it is adjacent to the high school and right across the street from the new hidden court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My concern, I guess, was if there's a car coming out of the, the, the driveway and it's a single-family uh, residential driveway and we have cars stacked up behind somebody that wants to turn in and they don't quite have room to, to bypass, uh, that may pose a problem. But there's no measurement here, so I don't. perhaps it's wide enough to handle the two cars. It, it's 10 feet wide. It's 10 feet wide. Okay. I'll, I'll check on that and see. Okay. Uh, Madam Chairman, yes. may I suggest that we just combine Saturday? And, uh, yeah, that's what I was maybe, thinking. Maybe of. hit this one at 11 o'clock? Yeah, would that be all right if we went and looked at uh, sure. this property at 11? You don't have to be there. Be happy to meet you there. Great. So we will see you on Saturday, September 24th at 11 a.m. Madam Chairman, yeah. do you want to, at this point, go down through or indicate the level of completeness of the application? Sure. Or do you just want to table pending that determination? Well, I think that would be helpful to uh, Mr. <coughs> Tinsman if you went through. Okay. Um, again, I, I think he realizes, when we've talked, I think he knows most of what's here or not here. And uh, I think the submission of his uh, re revised and, and kind of upgraded plans may help. A lot of the address a lot of the issues that are here, but um, in terms of building plans and elevations, he's, he's provided the building plans, but he hasn't provided the elevations of the building itself. 
given the fact that it's an existing structure, that may not be a, a major issue. He's, in terms of names of the owners of Canal Ball, Canal Youth Land, um, he's designated who owns some of the land, but he hasn't dealt with the people across the street, and I think that's important, especially given the fact uh, that we're going to have to look at and see where the, uh, the driveways are. So that probably needs to be added. Again, relatively minor. Um, location of easements, just wanted to ask the applicant if there were, were any easements uh, on the site. None that I'm aware of. Okay, all existing physical features on the site within 200 feet thereof. Uh, partially shows some tree, uh, you know, trees there, doesn't go off site, and further down we'll talk about in terms of landscaping, uh, you know, what may perhaps requiring more information in terms of what trees are there, or maybe more importantly, what perhaps should be preserved. You know, will all the existing trees be preserved? Are they all indicated on the site plan? Additional buffering, things of this nature, and that's 13, that's why I put partial there. Um, topography isn't shown, existing or proposed. Parking, loading, and unloading areas, um, it's indicated on the sketch, but in terms of a lot of the detail that, uh, that uh, Mr. Etzel talked about and other things in terms of the, the width of the uh, aisle leading to and from the parking spaces, that you know, will need to be provided. Curb information, if there are going to be curbs in the parking lots, uh, parking lot may or may not be required. Stormwater, not really dealt with all that much. Um, solid waste and disposal, again, pretty minor, but not addressed. Buffering and landscaping I already talked about. Uh, Mr. Boxer mentioned the sign issue, and I think that's in terms of completeness. Oh, I'd add one, Steve. Uh, it was mentioned that there was going to be a light in the back, but like the back of the property. There is a spotlight now on the back of the building. Okay, that currently exists. It, uh, okay, it, it might be good okay. to show yeah. where that shine so that the, we know whether it's one of those adjustable ones that you know it's on a mm -hmm. okay. hinge what somewhat and you can adjust that so that would be in the direction of the, the um, parking the part of the directly onto the parking I see so that that should be shown in some need want to see mm. yeah to um, location. Where, where does you know what's the path what's the uh, radius of the yeah, radius mm. of the Anything else, Steve, that might uh, help that's Mr. Tinsman? And that's in terms of just basic completeness. We've talked about other items, and I guess once the plans are drawn up by his engineer, then I think we'll have a better idea in terms of seeing what's there and not there. And a lot of it's just maybe given to the time pressures and the fact that he's doing it himself. Uh, it'll be a little tougher on a professional engineer. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do um, want to submit materials for the next time, September 29th is the deadline to make the October 19th meeting. I think it's October 19th, is it? October 17th. Oh, 17th, sorry. Okay. <coughs> Any questions from you, Mr. Tinsman? No, I... I as far as some of the items that are listed as partial on this uh, site plan review submission checklist, is this the appropriate time to ask for any waivers no. on some of those materials, or no. how, how does that? No, I, I don't think at this point it is. I mean, or Steve, what do you think? Well, it'd be up to the board, and some of them, um, you know, I guess I, I view my job as being the nitpicker. Um, the issues that technically in terms of completeness aren't there. Um, but I always sometimes, sometimes I'll add my editorial comment, but they're mine if they're not yours. So in terms of elevations, that may not be, a, in my mind, it may not be a major issue here, but it might be to some people. So I guess, you know, maybe in terms of some of these where I put partials at least, if you can, if you feel that you can give an indication now, that might be helpful to the applicant. If you don't feel like you can until you've gone on the site walk, you may just want yeah. to hold off. And that's well, that's why I said I think we should hold off. <coughs> Take these with us, and then as we look at the site, we can determine what what waiver. I, I don't know. I don't think waiver is a very a good word to use. But we will just look and see about the partials. How's that? Is that fair enough to start well, doing that now when we haven't seen it? Well, I'm only thinking in terms of engineering reports things of that nature that, that are going to be tight as far as getting items right. into the board. Um, 
you know, I would only ask like simple things like building plans and elevations and topography and all those types of things where it's an existing structure, existing landscaping, and I, and I really don't plan right. to change any of those things. Oh, I see I what would, you mean. I would like, I don't want to sound cheap or anything, but I'd like not to have to spend all kinds of money right. on engineering reports if it's not I necessary. I can sympathize with that. Well, is there anything um, that the rest of the planning board has to say about that? I think um, with respect to the landscaping and buffering plan, if you could get together with Mrs. Reiki and come up with some kind of agreement, you know, you put some shrubs available? in, are you going to put this in? And, oh. <laughs> um, just show them on your plan Okay. Uh, that these will be added. These Can you make it Saturday? <laughs> and I think Mrs. Reiki was also concerned about lights. Light. And if you could describe to her where the lights would be. Anything else? We will need a drawing of a sign. We'll have to see what the sign would look like. The sign? The sign. Yeah. Well, what about the t topography showing existing and proposed contours at five foot intervals? I wouldn't think we need that. I don't think we need yeah. that. You're not going to change any contours. No. You're talking about gravel over what's there. That's right. You're not extending the parking lot or the doing a lot more paving back there? Well, he is extending 50, mm -hmm. uh, 50. I wonder if that doesn't yeah. interplay. Yeah. It would, it would be the same grade as, the, as there now. You might well, be able we'll to cover. Take a look at it. You might be able to cover some of that under 12A in terms of, you know, at least providing enough information so you know where the storm, you know, drainage drains uh, water water flow is, is actually going to go and how much there will be so I guess that's it okay so I guess we will table this right mm -hmm. until the next time do I hear a motion to table so moved a second second any discussion all in favor? Aye. Say aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Guess Thank we'll you. see you Saturday. Eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock, Mr. Thank Tinsley. You. Thank you. Uh, last, before we go home, um, I think you do have before you a letter from Mike McGovern. Uh, the planning board has been invited by the town council. <laughs> to meet with them on October 5th at a joint meeting with the council on affordable housing. Because of that, we will have to cancel our workshop the t two days before that on October 3rd. We had the, the workshop on um, daycare. And I don't think that we, the planning board can come in twice that week. so. I think the, it would be in the best interest to uh, cancel that and go on with the October 5th joint meeting with the Town Council on Affordable Housing. I will not be here. Um, I don't know. You would have to ask um, do, who, t who takes notes at the Town Council. I'll have to check with Mike McGovern to see. I'd rather not. Okay. And I don't assume that you would have to chair because I would assume that the town council would chair this, right? Since it's on a board, I'm really sad to be missing it, but I have no other choice. So, is there anything else, Madam, uh, Madam Chairman? Maybe just to fill in, um, there's some discussion about the next that that Tuesday workshop, perhaps not occurring anyway. Am I getting out daycare information? What I thought I would do is to then just provide the daycare memo to the board at that meeting just so you can have it and look it over and then and we'll take it from there. Oh, super. That's great. Thank you. Anything else? Do you want to give an interpretation of this letter from the inn by the sea? Yeah. <laughs> well, it just sounds like they're, they're still active. Yeah. <laughs> they're still there. Reminding us that they're still there. That was my interpretation. My interpretation was they're having some problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was yours too. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I want to thank the planning board. More, more insight into this. <laughs> this was certainly hard work tonight, and I thank all of you for coming and expending your time and energy in the best interest of capitalism. Now, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much for tuning into the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board meeting. Good night. And good night. Yeah.